Welcome back to Painting Delight. I'm so glad to be with you again today and I really hope you're doing great wherever you are. So today I have prepared a black canvas and it is held vertical as you can see. And we make these canvases by applying a thin even coat on black gesso on a regular cotton canvas. Allow that to dry completely. And on top of that I have covered the entire surface with a mixture of sub green and phthalo blue. Just mix them on my brush here. So I want to make a scenery deep in the forest with some nice lights and big trees and all this and I really hope you enjoy today's episode. Now I have not used liquid clear or linseed oil on my surface because I want to have very strong colors and all this. But if you think that your blending is not easy enough you can first apply a thin, very very thin coat of liquid clear and then on top apply your transparent colors, okay? So let's start with a twins brush and some titanium white. Just tap in some paint. Not both sides. And let's decide where we want our light source to be. Let's say it is let's say it is here. And I'm using crisscross strokes working just towards the top. Now if you want to make your light more distinct here we need to clean the brush. Let's clean the brush with some paint thinner. And make sure you have dried your brush really really well when you do that. It's very important to have a very dry and clean brush to redo this process. Make sure it's very very dry. So let's return to the titanium white. Not both sides. And you can repeat the process as much as you want. It's completely up to you to to achieve the desired lightness in your painting. Just crisscross strokes here. And by the time the white is mixing with the color that's already on the canvas, we have this nice effect, you know, we go from the light to the dark. Now let's take another clean dry twins brush and just bring all this together. But I want to save this light area here, so do not overblend this this place. And now very very gently go across. I have a hair here. Now very very gently, just remove any brass marks. And as you can see, we have lots of different variations of light in here, but we have a main source anyway. Okay. Let's have some, some trees back in here. Let's use the two inch brush today. And this is the brush I used to cover the entire surface. So let's go into some sap green here, some phthalo blue. And I'm gonna take some dark sienna with that. Brush mix and maybe take a touch of titanium white. Make it a little bit lighter here. And just tap in some paint vary your colors and brush mix them. It's, it's very very important to have brush mixed paints here. Now using just the corner of the brush let's have some, some tree indications back in here. We also have some bushy areas. And you can have as many trees as you want. Let's have a small one in here. Play through your colors. Let's have a big one in here. Now I'm still saving this light area. So now it seems that the light is coming just behind those trees. And to paint these trees, I'm just using the corner of the twins brush. 
add some character to your trees. Maybe there's a big tree here that comes just outside the canvas. Okay. Now let's put some tree trunks. I'm gonna use my liner brush and go into some paint thinner and I'll go just in some dark sienna here. Just thin down your paint and twist your brush in there so you have a nice sharp edge to paint the tree trunks. And let's go here. And if you think that your paint is not sticking, you can just add a little bit of paint thinner or linseed oil if you want. Just add some tree trunks. And we do not want a lot of details yet. Just some basic, basic shapes. And make sure you give a tree trunk to every tree in here. And it really doesn't matter if you start from the bottom or the top of, or the bottom. Just do what is convenient for you. Just a tree trunk may live here. And make sure you do not make them all straight. We need some character to our trees. And give some branches and limbs. Make some random tree trunks that are naked. They will add more interest. Nice big tree trunk here. You can have as many trees as you want. Or if you want to put something different in here, just go on ahead and put it. Okay. Some random tree trunks for me. Okay. Now let's put the least little amount of highlight on top. I want to use a one inch brush today. So let me clean the thin paint here. And I'm going to use the one inch brush. Let's go into some cadmium yellow and take the least little amount of green. This is just sub green and all these nice colors we used to make the background trees. And I'm just pushing here with my one's brush. We want a nice ridge of paint on our palette that this one is also moving to our, to our brush here. Vary some colors, take some of the other yellows. And if you think your paint won't stick, just turn it down a little bit. Very, very little amount of paint thinner is necessary here. Just like so. And keep tapping. Okay. Now let's go up here. This is our light source, so we have to decide where we want our light to strike our trees. And it starts from the top. And as you can see, we don't have great variations here from the background color. So let's make it a little bit lighter for you to see. Just like so. Just add some nice highlights in this one too. And I'm using just the corner of the brush for that. A little bit more paint, vary your colors. And use both sides of the brush for that. Just like so. And remember to leave dark areas in between your, tree, your leaves because this is what gives depth to a painting. Some nice variations here. And let's go to the other trees. So I'm going to draw a little, little touch of bright red to that. And this one here. Just put some nice leaves in. Okay. And we have another one here. 
And the Black Gesso Gums is very in handy here because we have covered most of the dark areas we already want. So, it makes life much easier for us. Now, I'll tell you something, let's have a different kind of bush here. I want to take, I want to take a twitch brush today. Let's change things a little bit. So, I'm gonna use just, just the tip of the twins brush, hope you can see it. And just tap in some paint, going through my yellows and the greens and all these. And just tap. So in order to make folders like that, we're just using the top bristles of the brush here and let's see what we have. Let's start from the lighter spot. As you can see we have some nice leaf indications, maybe add a little amount of paint thinner so our paint sticks better. But remember to be very very gentle when you're touching the canvas like that. Let the brush do the work for you. Just tap in some paint. We're gonna go into some yellow ochre here. Vary the, the shapes and the colors and all these, you know that already. And start from the ones that are further away first and work forward. Take some more soft green. Let's have another layer of bushes here. Just like that. And go in here, and as we go further away from the light source, you can darken your color so it looks much more natural. As you can see, this one's hiding in the dark. Just like so. And another layer down here. Okay. Let's scratch in some sticks and twigs with the clean knife and we're gonna let some of the blood show through so it gives us the illusion that there are thousands of sticks and small trunks and all these that are playing back here just scratching it's very very easy and effective Okay, let's add some grassy areas. Gonna return to my one inch brush, but you can use a two inch brush to make things squeaky if you want. So I'm going here and load some paint in the brush this time. Just push some paint. And let's decide the lay of the land here. So let's say that. Yeah. It's so easy to decide how you want things to be when painting and this technique because things work themselves and we have the light spot here so we want more light to hit these areas and return here some nice grassy areas and in here we need a lot of paint and not a lot of pressure because if we push too hard, we're going to destroy the nice grassy effect we have here, so just let the bristles do the work. You can see these nice grassy indications here, just be very gentle like that. And if you want, you can be slower and just go like that and have the same effect, but it's only a matter of practice on how quick you're going to do that or how much you enjoy it, so. So let's have some big trees, we have a first layer already. And I want to use a fan brush to make some tree trunks. So let's go into my Van Dyke Brown and some dark sienna here. Load some paint. Let's have big trees today. Let's have a big one right here. And now we start having fun with whatever shapes and sizes of trees we want. And you know it's very important to decide where you want your trees to be. I don't want to kill what I have in the background that I like a lot. So in here I don't have 
nice shadows from my tree. So let's put another tree right here, like so. Just load some paint on the fan brush and just pull downwards. Let's have some more. Let's have another one. Let's have another one in here. And as you can see, I have varied the height and the thickness of these tree trunks here. Let's have this a little bit thicker. And this is the first layer, okay? We're gonna come back and add more details. I want to layer the painting. I think it's gonna be a very nice painting. So let's put let's put the lens now. Returning to my paint thinner with the same color. This is just Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna. And let's put some nice hands, arms and so on for these trees. Just add some details here. And remember to shake your hand to achieve nice effects for the tree's arms. Whatever shape and thickness you want. This is just a very free method of painting that you really don't have to worry about a lot of things. And that's what I like the most. Just some nice twigs and sticks. And it will probably take some time to get friends with the liner brush. But be patient, everything will come in its time. Like this big tree here. And I think I'm gonna put some leaves onto Mostly I'm painting this kind of trees naked, but today I want some nice leaves. You know, I like very much painting with all this green and all these. Just enjoy it and I want to share it with you. So if you have any version of the paintings I've done here, just feel free to send me pictures and post them on my Facebook page. I just love seeing everyone's work. Now let's clean this spot here and let's mix, let's mix a highlight color first. I'm gonna go into my white here, this is titanium white, some more white and I'm gonna go into the bright red and some of my browns. I want a kind of pinkish brown color but do not over mix, give some nice marbled paintings here, okay? So I'm gonna take just a roll of paint and we just pull the paint flat and cut across. This is what we're painting with, okay? So let's decide what kind of effect we want. I'm gonna touch here very, very gently with this roll of paint. And when this dries, it's gonna give you the illusion of a real tree trunk a real bark on your tree. And remember where your light source is coming from and do the same thing to all the trees. And by not over mixing the paint on the palette, we just have all these nice effects you can see here. Just like that, just touch. It's very, very simple. Just touch, touch, touch. Reload your knife as necessary. It's up to you to decide where you're gonna load your brushes and knives and handle the equipment the way you want.
and let's make a shadow color. Maybe there is some reflected light. So I'm gonna take some more white and I'm gonna take dark sienna. I'm sorry, this is Van Dyke Brown and some a very small amount of black, maybe some pale of blue. Yeah, that's nice. Some more Van Dyke Brown and just do the same thing again here and now we're going in the opposite direction just do the same thing and if you want a different color or a different shape of trees just go ahead and put it in I'm just showing you how to do this. And now let's move on to the other tree too. Just touch, touch, touch. Okay. And if you want you can come back with some straight Van Dyke Brown here and just bring all this together, just use some brown and add more detail you want just like so okay now let's add some leaves. Let's try to add some leaves. I'm gonna use the ones brush I already have. Take some sub green, some Indian yellow. Play through your colors. And we're just pushing here. Lots of paint so it sticks easier on the thick paint that there is already on the canvas. Let's go up here. Just add some leaves. using just the corner of the brush for that. And if you think you're picking some of this thick paint that's on the canvas, either thin down your paint or just be a little bit gentler. Do not add a lot of pressure or anything. And let's go to these trees now. Just the corner of the brush. Play with your colors, with your brushes. Just enjoy things here. And we can leave some of the leaves of one tree to come forward to the other one. This is what adds interest. So let's do that. I like it. And let's do the same thing here. And that easily we have some very nice trees. Now let's clean their foot with some grassy areas. See, that is easily you can cover what you don't want in your painting. But this one is very, very important to be done because you don't want just a tree to be flowing, be floating, I'm sorry, on your painting. So let's add some more grassy areas here. So I think we should do another layer of such trees because right now we're going to add more depth and push this back. So let's take Van Dyke Brown once again and Dark Sienna. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's, ha let's have one tree. Let's have one tree. So we build more layers like that and I'm going to come in here just like that you know when you're painting you start seeing things and this is what you can easily put on canvas because this is something that literally floats out of your heart out of your imagination so you're not committed or anything you can change your mind whenever you want 
Well, it's still the same process. And I'm going to fill down my pen. And add some limbs here. Just put some paint and, you know, you can have as many leaves as you want. This is a bigger tree. Or maybe it's not because it's closer to us and it looks bigger. And I'm going to put another big arm here. And now, let's add highlights and shadows. I return to my highlight color here. This is white, bright red, dark sienna. Remember not to over mix them. Because we have so many variations of colors and not only that, but the role of paint is picking up paint that already exists on canvas and we have lots of nice effects like that. Go to my shadow color now. Nothing to worry about here, just put some life on this tree. I'm gonna return to my Van Dyke Brown. Bring all this together. Just touch. And I'm gonna return to my highlight color and fix this area here. You can see you can add many layers of paint here. Okay. And now return to my orange brush. Lots of paints, very, very important. And go up here and add my leaves and all these. Some nice big trees live in this forest. And remove any thick paint you have picked up. If you want, you can thin down your paint. But remember not to add too much paint in it because like that you're gonna thin down your paint a lot and you're not gonna have this nice lace effect we have. Okay. And now I'm gonna clean his roots. That is we have another layer. As you can see, this pushes this tree pushes this one back a lot, so... And now let's go in here... Put some nice grass areas. So tell you what, let's have... Let's have some more... Some more trees. But first I want to bring the land closer a lot, because I have something in my mind. Okay. Add some more grassy areas. And as you can see, this is disappearing to the dark. This is what I want to achieve because we are running out of paint and we are picking more of the under color. Some nice grassy areas. Okay, let's have let's have big trees again. If you do not want to repeat this process, you can just leave this out of your painting. So let's have a big one. Big one here. Big strong trees. And actually I've gotten this inspiration for trees. From the trees that are out in the road where I live. Where to put the other one. Let's put another one. 
tell you something. I'm going to have one right here, just in front of the other. Doesn't matter if you just go above that, like that, you know it's back there, so. And I'm going to have another one right here. Maybe it's got a big root. Let's have a big root like that. Okay. Now, do the same thing. Just love these kind of trees. And when I started painting, I just started understanding trees and nature. I mean, all these nice clouds and the lights in the sky. And this is what I'm trying to put on my paintings, just inspiration from daily life. Sometimes I'm trying to paint clouds that I have seen that morning or I have taken a photograph of. And it's very important to share this with everybody and especially younger kids. I mean, I'm 28 in a month and I really want to share this kind of stuff with younger people because we have abundant nature and we really need to look after it for a better future for younger generations but people seem to forget where they are born and not giving enough respect so in here, in here I'm just carrying on with my arms of the trees just thin down your paint and put on the kind of limbs you want there is a big one here sometimes I look at trees that I just have thousands and thousands of leaves and you know, I don't like putting those on my paintings because I think they are kind of disturbing but if you want to have such a face you can just go on and do that nobody can stop you, this is very important to have freedom now let's make some more paint and just some red and the browns and I'm gonna come here and touch, touch, touch. Now that we are closer, we can see more details on these trees. Just like that. Go to the other side. And it's it's just amazing the kind of that we have already built. You can just carry on forever if you want. Put all these nice details and the colors and just have fun with it. And you can also use a different medium color, I mean, I used as a medium a mixture of pale of blue and sub green. And you can use whatever transparent color you want, you can use Indian yellow too. And change the season, say that it's autumn or something. You can use crimson. I did a painting last week for a friend that's probably the kind the, the same kind of painting like this but I used crimson and lots of reds and I had lots of requests for such a video so I thought 
I should do something related or actually do the same painting in the future. I, I hope you can see what I'm doing with my, my hands not coming in the way, so let's do this this way. Just some reflected light. So this friend actually bought the painting. She asked for it in the first place, but I didn't know if I could make it as good as she wanted. And I really couldn't believe that I actually made a different kind of painting using this technique. So if you want to buy a painting of mine, just check my Facebook page where I have lots of different paintings. Most of them I have done on camera. So if you want to help me financially, you can do so. I have a very good friend in Scotland that bought the painting I made from Swiss summertime that I painted last season and he was really blown away. He was so happy. He's an amazing guy. So Thomas, if you're watching, hello. Now let's return to the to the wine's brush. Thomas is just an amazing person and I'm very honored to call him my friend. He's just an amazing person. So in here I'm gonna add more foliage. And let's come here. And we're going on top of several layers of paint and as you can see we're not destroying anything because this is a wet and wet technique, this is how it works this is what we want to do with lots of different layers without messing up what we already have use just the corner when you're doing that And I hope I've not forgotten anything. <laughs> Just that here and there are some leaves. And do the same thing to all of your trees and I'm gonna cover some areas that I don't like. No, you don't have to worry about making a mistake, I mean, by the time we're using wet paints here, it's very important that they are oil paints because I don't think you can do that in watercolor or acrylics or anything, so if you do not like something, just go on top of that. Or if you have something that you do not like at all, you can just scrape it off. But be very careful when you have that many aspects in a painting, because it will be a little bit more difficult to redo something that's in the background. And here I'm just fixing the roots of this tree and returning to my brush to clean this. And do the same thing here. Okay. Now let's Let's bring this a little bit further. I have an idea. I hope I have enough battery in my camera to show you what I want to see. To show you what I want you to see. So, I want to have some water here. And I want to show you something different. So, I'm gonna go into my twins brush and take some titanium white here. Just take some titanium white. This is a light source, okay? So, let's have a reflection. Just load some paint here. Just pull downwards. Just like so. Make it a little bit higher. I want to have enough light to show you what I want you to see. Just bring it down. 
Well, if you have gas not already, I'll try to reflect the trees in the water. I have all these nice variations here in the water, so just pull, pull, pull. By the time we have wet paints, as I told you earlier, we can do that. And once again, I'm not having liquid clear, and yet, as you can see, I can have nice mixing effects and be able to move the paint. And now, very, very gently, just remove your brass marks and achieve a very nice water effect. Okay, now, bravery test. Let's reflect these three trees. You know, I've only done that once in my life, but I think it's nice for you to see. So in order to make a right reflection here, we have to have the opposite kind of shape of the tree in the water. So if we want to lift the tree up to have the same identical figure, we have to do a different different shape in the water. So let's start from this one and by the time this is a curve, let's bring the curve here and I'm not bringing all the reflection in because we're gonna put something to cover all these so when we put the forward layer here we will know that the reflection is in the leg. So I'm gonna just paint the amount of the tree, the part of the tree you can see in the water as the light indicates here, so let's do the same thing here and just like that and now the difficult one this goes like this have a bump here, so let's put this into. Okay, don't pay attention to the rest of it, but we're gonna reflect some of this. Now, I'm gonna take and highlight this, but be careful not to put too much paint on the way you did up there, because when we're gonna do the reflection, this is gonna smear and not look such nice and watery as before, so I'm gonna have a smaller roll of paint here and just did the same thing as we did earlier but have less paint that's the key small small amount of paint and I'm gonna go to all these trees first go to this one too. And this is something different and I hope you really like what you see here. Just tap tap tap. Okay, back to my shadow color. go this way so you can see it. And the same thing over here. You know it's gonna be very nice that we will actually be able to reflect some of the leaves and the limbs and all this. And when when the reflection comes to life you can still see the leaves and the limbs and the arms of these nice trees. So let's paint this. I'm going to take my liner brush. Not much paint, always remember that. So I can see this limb here and it goes this way. Okay. And now in here I'm going to see a limb from this side. 
and another one that is higher. It's higher on the tree, so lower in the reflection. Just like so. And I'm not even changing the way I hold the canvas so I paint them naturally. I'm just doing them on a reflected kind of metal. So in here the end goes higher so putting a limb right here. And there is another one in here that I can see. Maybe I put these two but I don't know if I can be able to save them later. We'll do we'll do our best so there is another one that comes a little bit lower and another one in here. Okay. So in order to paint reflected leaves we'll just reverse our brush. So let's go and the way we paint grass at some, some point, not like this, but just by pushing upward, this is what we're gonna do here. So load your brush, reverse it, and just push. As you can see, I'm just loading the brush, not a lot of paint, and then reverse it. And come here and use the corner and do the reflection of the leaves. Remember where you have the leaves on the tree and just reverse your brush and paint them. So in here we have some nice, some nice leaves on the trunk. Reflect them. Okay. And now the total bravery test. Gonna take a clean paint brush. And this is what requires a very, very delicate touch. So I'm gonna go just above the whole area. But very gently, very, very gently. Just caress it. And do the same thing in here. Be very gentle with that. Remove any excess paint that you might be getting and make sure you pull straight downwards and you see the nice reflection we have some very little streaks here that indicate that there is water in our painting and now very very gently just go across Whisper light movement here. Just like that. So here I'm gonna pull and caress. Okay? And in here repeat the same process. And gently, gently. Just go across. And I think we did a pretty good job, okay? And now for the final touches of the painting. So let's, let's use the big brush. I'm gonna go into some phthalo blue, some of the browns and the black and all these. Just, just put some paint on and just add some, some areas with some big bushes or anything. Just use that top corner. This is where things get hard. So we have the whisper like reflection earlier and now we're having this noisy noisy top marks here just dark paint whatever color you like and I want to save the reflection of course I'm not gonna put anything on top By the time we have the gesture here, we do not have to worry about a lot of things. So let's take 
the other twin brush that has the highlight color. And we're gonna put some nice brushes here. Just like so. This goes slightly above the door. And just touch, touch, touch. And in here the same thing. So let's have a path here to break the scenery. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the knife for that. And I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown in here. Pull it out and cut off a roll of paint like that. So let's start from here and just have a regular path as we always put in our paintings. But if you do not want a path, feel free to do whatever you like. Make it bigger here because it's getting closer and closer to us. Just make it bigger like so. And I'm gonna take the highlight color I have from the tree trunks and very gently just caress that. Just add no pressure, just let the roll of paint caress the canvas here. We have a very nice effect. I'm gonna go into some more paint here and just clear the path on the edges. The bushes here are trying to reclaim this path. Use only only the tip of the twins brush. Okay. And I'm gonna put some in here, gonna add some bright red here and there. Nice red bush. And maybe these bushes have flowers on, so just try to vary the color on your brush and have a very nice effect like that. And remember to leave dark areas in between. in some sticks and twigs and let the black show through. Or you can just take some white so you can see it. Just take some white on the on the edge of the knife here. So I'll tell you something. I've forgotten to put some land here to hold all these, so let's take some Van Dyke Brown. No, I changed my mind. I'm gonna show you something else. Let's take some brown down here, okay? I have Van Dyke Brown. And I'm gonna take some liquid white with a clean knife. And I'm gonna go right here with my liquid white. Let's put some more. And on my white, I'm gonna add some dark sienna it is quite quite thin okay too much red here for me I added some bright red okay so we have a marble kind of color here and what I want to do is to put some stones instead so I'm gonna go into my filbert brush and add a lot of paint a lot of paint so we have both sides with Van Dyke Brown. Okay, as you can see, we have a lot of paint, and I'm gonna go into this thin paint here with one side and just pick up some of that. So we have both sides, one with 
dark color and one with light color. So let's have some stones here. This is our light source. And we're just using the cone of the brush doing sort of round this move here. And make some stones. And do not make them all the same size or shape. This is something I think I haven't done in a while. Can't remember if I've even done it on camera, so this is an episode where I think it's different and I really hope you get to enjoy that. Let's have some more stones and reload your branch as necessary here. Maybe have some more random in the water. And do the same thing here. Let's reverse the brush. Small, big, bigger, smaller. Whatever size you like. Just drop them in. Don't be afraid. We're not here to be afraid. We're here to have a good time. And some bigger stones. Now, let's reflect those. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to take a clean one inch brush this time. So, we're going to reflect the ones that are in the background first and then the ones I've put in front and maybe I'm gonna add some more so let's very 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 carefully just pull straight down like that very very carefully and just do that on the bottom of the stones remove the color you're picking and I've chosen the one brush because, as you can see, it sneaks much easier back here. But remember to pull straight downwards, it's very, very important. And in here, do the same thing. Be careful not to kill the tree here. And now, gently, gently go across. Just with small, small moves. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing to these ones. Okay. Let's repeat the process. We turn to my field with brush. have some more stones, let's have a couple in here and some here big, small, doesn't matter have another one back here and another one in here Just put them wherever you want. Good. Reflect them once again. And find the edge of the brush that works better for you. I don't want to destroy the water I have here, so be very, very careful with that. go and pull only the tip on the bottom of these stones and then very gently once again remove the brass marks from here and now to clean all these I'm gonna need some liquid white let's fix a couple of those first Let's fix which one like that. 
Okay. Once again. Okay. Now I'm gonna take some liquid white, this is straight liquid white here, and pull this out very flat, cut across, and do the water lines here. Be very, very careful though. We really, really don't want to destroy what we have built here. Some nice water lines. Just go below every stone. Just like so. And this is what actually decides the separator be between the reflection and the actual sound here. Okay. And I think that we have a finished painting. No, we haven't. We have to go to this side too. But as we're getting closer to the end of this episode, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I really hope you get to enjoy some different things we've done. And I really hope you do your own version your, with your own colors and ideas. So send me a message and let me know how you're doing. And until next time, I'd like to wish you happy painting. Take care and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.